Hello and thank you for joining us for Evolve TV, where we uncover the secrets of how aftermarket workshops can improve, optimise and systemise their businesses. I'm your host, Jason O, and in this episode, we discover how we can save time in the workshops and plan our parts like a pro. We discuss how we can be smarter with our time, debunk some myths around some old and new ways of doing things, as well as learn some handy tips and tricks for running a more efficient workshop. As part of the leading Evolve workshop program by mechanic.com.au, Evolve TV helps aftermarket workshops discover how to become more connected with the marketplace, their customers, their staff, as well as other leading aftermarket workshops. Learn how to leverage digital platforms and tools as well as best business practices in order to run a more efficient and innovative automotive service and repair business. This is Evolve TV. Welcome to the show, Zach. Thanks, Jason. All right, so let's jump straight into it. What are the main challenges repairers are facing when ordering and sourcing parts? Well, my big thing, I think, is time. It's the time it takes to do all those little little pieces of putting a job together that aren't adding value to the business. It's the time it takes to understand what part you need, the time it takes to find out and double check that it's the right thing, the time that you spend on the phone. It's all those those little bits of unchargeable, unbillable hours that are wasted in workshop where it could be reinvested into contacting and communicating, engaging with customer, or even trying to fit an extra bit of job or going home that little bit earlier and spending time with the family. Can you share some examples of how our time in a workshop can be impacted and why that's problematic? Well, think about looking up a part or finding a part, calling up a, a store or calling up a, a supplier to get them to look up the part. They don't have the information that's in front of you. It, it can take you a lot longer waiting on the phone. You've got hold um, other customers that, that might be getting served as well. There's a huge amount of time wasted that just waiting what that looks like is say if you could save two minutes two and a half minutes per order per per day say even just five orders a day that equates out to about 50 hours a year yeah right it's a huge huge, a huge amount of time huge amount of time and you think to yourself look that's roughly an hour a week it's 10 minutes i can stay back 10 minutes but when you're ordering the parts is the busiest part of the day mm. and so when you need that time to spend talking to customer when your service advisors or your parts team are trying to get the parts out they're trying to get parts in it's the really kind of crunch time if that 10 minutes was three o'clock in the afternoon it wouldn't be so big but right then bang smack in the middle of the morning when you're really trying to get the day going and getting started that 10 minutes could be everything and if you order the parts from some point a and it's not there you've again got to start again to go to point B. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, and hope they've got it. That's for each supplier. So you multiply that out. That's just one. If you've got three or four key suppliers that you deal with and you've gone through one, then the other, then the other, calling, spending all that time, you could be on the phone for 10 minutes trying to find one part. It, you, you, it can just explode, can't yeah. it? So in your experience, how are the repairers navigating these challenges and, and making up for lost time? That's a probably important one. How do they make up for the lost time? Well, They've got, to, they've got to bring that money back. So mm. if they're investing that 10 minutes, that 10 minutes is worth a few dollars. Even if you're charging out to a customer as a billable charge, it's worth a couple of bucks. You've got to then go through and fight with each supplier to make sure that you're getting that best price. Whereas really, you could reinvest that time. You're not having to try and chase it up. You're not trying to have to make it back. Yeah. And the really hard thing is price is really important to, to a workshop but it's not always important to a customer. There's, there's been a lot of research done. The most recent one that I can think of, the AAA did a great report a few years back um, where they found that customers' number one preference, so the reason why they chose a workshop, was the people. They wanted to understand the people, the business, the engagement, the connection. The least selected primary reason was price. Right. And and so you're reinvesting that time instead of fighting and trying to find the the best product or trying to trying to claw that money back. You're you're investing that time right where it actually makes most sense to your customer, and ultimately those are the ones that are bringing the money into your business. Yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of people are time poor. 
And when presented with a solution to a problem that they might have, you know, if money is an issue, they'll normally pay to have it sooner. Mm. And so quite often or not, that is like, can you do the job? Yeah. And, and getting the work underway, if you spend that 10 minutes talking about before, going through for one part number, if you've got to go through and redo that for four or five cars that have come into the day, that's a full hour of mm. time that you're now waiting to get some of those parts in. They're missing the first yeah. run. Can you start all those jobs straight away? Are you going to end up with cars on hoist that are now waiting for parts that mm. don't show up in time? And it, it, it's got a cascading effect on how much, how much you invest right at the start then helps build out or save that time through the rest of the day. In 2022, our end users are aware that, that, that resources are limited across the board, everywhere in the community. And there's no difference in a workshop. You know, one oil filter for a specific car, there might only be one. You've got two of them being serviced. And one has to wait a week for the next oil filter to come through. As an example, that's when customers are making their decisions on price. I need it. Yeah, and it's the exact same for even in, in our stores when we're supplying. We've only got a limited amount of stock to service multiple different workshops. If you're chasing around those parts and you're taking that 10 minutes, you might miss out on the opportunity the because part gone. Yeah. somebody else has already grabbed it for a customer yeah. that they've needed with that exact same part. And again, it just cascades. It needs to come in from another store. It needs to come in from further away, a distribution center, somewhere else. You can still get the part. You can still service the car. But that's ticking. Yeah. And, and you've just lost how much, how much resource time do you have in a day? The shop's only open for so long. Making sure you've got as much done as quickly as possible at the start just, again, stops it from compounding through the rest of the day. So what's going to happen if the auto repair businesses don't make any changes and things stay the way they do? Well, the, the world's changed. Well, the customers now have a, a digital experience that they're used to through all other aspects of their lives. And it's the immediate gratification, the immediate answer. Mm. I, I want to know, can I go do this? Now, now, I, now. Yeah. And I don't have to wait for an answer anymore. When they're engaging with our with workshops, they've got the same expectation. Like, do you have that part in stock? Can I bring my car down to you now? The only way that you're going to be able to answer that question is if you've got systems in place or you've got the, the visibility in those digital platforms to show you, yes, I can get this, or no, I can't, you're going to have to bring it in this afternoon. You're not going to have that opportunity to say, hang on, let me call you back, because that's completely out of line with what the customer wants. They, they want that answer now. And so being able to provide it to them is the thing that captures them and brings them in. It's, it's funny because, you know, with health and well-being, we, we go to Google and have old Dr. Google and we put the symptoms in and normally somebody tells us something that sort of lines up with our situation. The same can be said with cars. The resources that are available online now, personal experiences, previous repairs and so forth. You know, my, my 2019 Prado is making a knocking noise from the rear end. And they can say it's bushes or it's this or it's diff clunk or whatever. You are seeing people who are coming in with a little bit more of an understanding. And you've got to guess be careful that, you know, if you are looking at parts, they are relevant as opposed to subjective. Oh, and, and making sure that you're not taking that customer insight as, as fact. They've mm. not, they're not trained there. They're not perfect. And they might have looked up a lot of that content comes from overseas where vehicle standards are slightly different. It might be called the same car, but the part's slightly different. We have different shocks for, for our vehicles because our roads are different to, to other countries. And so trusting what they're saying, hey, can you get me this part number? You still need to go through and verify and catalog and make sure that it's it's yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, so again, you still need those tools, even though customers might be coming to you with that more information, you've got to make sure you're verifying it. Mm. It's interesting. The businesses need to change because the customers certainly are, aren't they? Uh, and, and they've been changing for a while. The, the mindful one I haven't seen yet was we already saw this change pre-COVID. 27% uh, of um, workshop customers preferred to deal with the business digitally. Um, and I can only imagine since COVID, we've all been mm. locked away, that that's changed significantly. There's been huge boom in digital industry and I can't imagine that automotive would be any different. So what would be some of the changes coming for the future? Things like just parts aren't, aren't a solution for customer. 
it's I'm, I'm not looking to get my brake pads changed my brakes are making a noise and I want them serviced and so the way that a customer engages is is going to adapt it's going to turn to more solution um, options and and mm. engines like mechanic.com.au service booking that tool runs on the same data and so if you're not if you don't have confidence and you're not using um, tools that look up parts and this information now then it becomes harder when these tools start becoming really mainstream for your workshop and your business to have trust in those because they're talking to the customer with that same information yeah. on your behalf. Yeah, yeah. well, mechanic.com.au is a great source to go to. But what I'm a little bit concerned is, you know, those, those people perhaps uh, aren't already using the Navigator Pro. What would you say in regards to support for those people? Well, it's looking at the, the things that it can do for them. It's a 24-7 access to a shop. So it's keys to the door to your local store. And you can go in and pull that stock. It's not, not just seeing what we've got, but being able to capture and take the stock that you need beforehand. That's an interesting concept. A re- yeah. It, well, a really good one that we have is there's a couple of, couple of workshops. What they'll do is they'll wake up in the morning, they'll look through their jobs for the day while they're having breakfast at home book all the parts and and because they're mobile they'll go past the store the second the door opens everything's there so they already own the parts yes oh when when you order a part in in navigator it takes the stock off the shelf even if somebody's not yeah, physically in the building it yep it takes it off anybody can test it next time you send an order hop straight back to that same part number and you'll see the stock count go down because it's live so what time are they doing we pick up the orders all through the day, but first thing in the morning is the busiest part. So if you get the orders in early... Because I'm thinking about those workshops that are ordering at 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and there's quite a few that are doing it. If there's people in their area and workshops that are ordering prior, they're at a disadvantage. Yes, absolutely. And it's, it's getting that stock in, and so you've got the confidence. I know what cars I've got to move when I get into the shop. I need these hoists. I can plan my day because I don't have to second guess or worry about when the parts are showing up. Because I've gone through and I've booked and I've picked everything up. That sounds like efficiency. It, it is. And there's a whole bunch of other things that we put in place to, to really try and help drive that. So one that we did a few years back was um, Rego Search. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just trying to make it easier to communicate. This is the car that I'm looking at. I know. So that way I know what parts I'm looking for instead of having to try and manually do it like the, the old way. And it's not... Not foreign technology, everybody does it now, but we were the first to push it into market. And it's those sort of things, just trying to help workshops really kind of pick up and build on the time that they're using, make it more constructive through the business rather than just wasting it. The other piece that we do is a a lot of customization. Um, You think about the smallest little things around, it's great I can see a list of parts, but I choose to use this brand over this brand. Mm. The system lets you choose your preferences, so it's always showing what you want to see first at the top, but not limiting you. If there's no stock or that brand doesn't supply that, there's still those secondary options, but you're keeping to to those structures and those those core brands that you choose to partner with as part of your business. Well, it's interesting because I did actually try it out. I've got a 1963 Dodge Phoenix. Didn't work, no. right? But my 2019 Pajero perfect everything came up it was absolutely brilliant so i really can see the value in being a workshop owner but being able to get those parts early like you mentioned that has to be critical to the success and and it is absolutely and the other piece is the communication how easy is it to state a handful of numbers a a number plate a customer knows that they see Mm. it's written on the front of the car yeah versus trying to explain it's a it's a holden commodore yeah. Um, or it's a, it's a Ford Pajero. Like yeah. they're, they're not always the, the most articulate, and at least that's, that's a nice solid way mm. for those common vehicles where there's a lot of divergence. The older stuff we haven't focused on because everybody can understand and there's, there's a lot of in-ground knowledge on those cars. You don't have to worry about them so much. And that allows the connection of the workshop on an older car like mine, like my Dodge. It allows that connection to occur, to go, right, we've got to be really careful what we do here. And as the end user, I'm like, you understand. Yep. All right, what are some of the myths you've heard versus using Navigator Pro and calling the Repco store direct in regards to getting parts? What are the, some of the stories you've heard there? So the, the big one is the um, stock is incorrect. So it's live straight to our system. Just like I was saying before, it's, it's literally a door into the business. And when you order, it takes and it reserves that stock. So yeah. if there's 10 filters, you order two, 
there's eight to everybody else and you can see that if you go through and place an order jump straight back you can see it change immediately right. and so it's always always live and always accurate ties directly to to our system the same thing that the guys use in store do you have people who use the pro and then call the store yes yes and it's because they <laughs> they think that they'll get the parts faster oh um, right okay and, and it's not the case it's it, online well and because when you place the order you don't have to re-communicate everything you call up the store and hey i'm looking for this or i want this part it it, it sounds really weird but when you've already looked it up or you're in you already understand the vehicle the part what i'm looking for and you've you've seen the price and it's in stock it, and it's in stock you've you've then got to communicate what car you're looking up who you are too as well we've got a lot of customers making sure that if we place the order it's going to the right shop and and all of that takes time and communication which then gets wasted so with so, navigator pro when you got to that final point you know it's in stock you're basically standing in front of the shelf Oh, yeah, absolutely. Same so you might as, as well just go grab, drop it in the cart, and away you go. Same as putting on one of these and doing it yourself. Yep. So what about setting up you know, the hardware on-site in workshops, computers and bits and pieces and things like that? It's not like old programs that you actually have to have a download and somebody come and set it up and put all everything in there. It's run as a website, so it goes on mobile app you can use it on tablet. You don't have to do anything apart from rem remember your login just like you would for any other ordering platform or anybody else's e-commerce site you don't need anything to to be installed or downloaded so it's really easy just click on opens up log in and everything's there and it's tailored to your pricing everything straight out of the box because it's talking to our our systems and it understands who you are what stock what what stuff you want to look at and where you are so your local store i've got this vision of being you know it's a 24 7 uh, access to a warehouse of car parts. You know, you don't have to wait for the business to own to open to walk in. Have you got this? Can you get it? It's available to you all the time. And I also have this vision of somebody saying, "Okay, so the car's broken down on the side of the road or whatever. It is. What's your rego number?" And then going, "Yep, yeah, no problems at all. I can order that for you right now." Yeah. I, I, that that sort of fluidity in your customer service that is huge for your reputation. And being able to being able to talk to the customer with confidence, your car's broken down. You know, I'm going to get it towed back to your shop mm. and being able to look at it and go, well, I know I can get those parts right now. I can see it. Not a problem. We'll have it back on the road before school pickup. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. Yeah. And so you can give that customer that confidence and turn a really negative experience that they're going through into a positive and it builds trust. It builds mm. a connection with that customer. I think, I think when that technician service advisor presses the order part as opposed to making the phone call, I think that'll be a real turning point for a business isn't it oh yeah we don't want customers to not call and not talk to us but it's on the things when all the information is there you don't need us to to help or add value to that then what we can do is we can add mm. more value to the times when you do need us mm. it's all those times when you think you've called up and there's been you know you've you've had to wait on hold or there's been a delay our guys work so hard through that yeah and you're, you're just going right around it you're mm. you're popping over the shoulder grabbing it yourself and putting it there and it's still going to yeah. come out especially faster. those jobs that pop up during the day when you don't expect them the ones that you're planning in the morning and you're doing that but the ones that just lob on you know at lunchtime yeah and you're like right i don't actually have time to call oh they've got it grab and it's here that's the real real magic isn't it on even when you're doing those callbacks to customers too you've got to you found, hey, there's something wrong in the car while well, I've been doing another part of the service or I've been doing some other work and mechanically I've got to fix this before I give you the car back because it's dangerous. You can, while you're on the phone to the customer, go through and look at mm. those options, make sure it's something you can do right now or explain to the customer, hey, we're going to have to keep it overnight or whatever that scenario is. Yeah. Rather than setting up an expectation, hey, we've got to fix this and then come back and say, oh, we're not going to be able to do it today. Mm. You've, you've got the confidence to say, it's right there. I've got it. I've, I've made it available. Oh, this is a really interesting question. What do you think auto repair businesses should stop doing now? What should they stop doing? Stop doing everything just because that's the way it's always been done, I guess. Yeah, okay. So that's the way, uh, that's the way that we do it. That's the way that we've always done it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Stop being open to change. Yeah, and and I guess it's it's also a little bit of a start question. Is is start 
questioning why you've done it that way or what makes sense what's what's the value of doing it that particular way if something's not adding value to the business question why do we do it mm. what's how can i turn this into a positive what's what's a better better process or a better option what are the things out there it's interesting because i remember a period of time in the work industry when i was in the industry you called up for your parts then suddenly the part supplier started giving you catalogs so you could look up your catalog get your number and then call for the part this is the next step yeah and it makes sense just like then the reason why you hand over the catalog is because the person on the other end of the phone isn't in front of the car yeah they can't yeah. see what the part is there, yeah. if there's two options there's a two uh, a two pipe and a three pipe um, water pump mm. they can't mm. see that they don't know what you're looking at and so that that becomes a question that they have to ask and you have to answer and you know unless you've got a phone right next to the car and you're staring at it you've got to wander out there and again more time mm. wasted whereas if you've got it on on your phone you're standing next to the car i can see that's the right one yeah and get it now yeah and to stop doing something stop doubting yourself in, embrace the change absolutely like yeah. the the tools are there to to help do it and find the right information it's the exact same catalogs that we use in stores stop doubting yourself and doubting that you're not the expert mm. i mean you do the work on the car yeah the 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 parts the easy part pardon the pun of course and that's uh, it is it, that's the simple part isn't it new and existing users of repco's navigator pro there's always going to be tips and tricks for the people who have used it for a long time and a short time give us some gold there's there's dozens but i'll, <laughs> I'll pick it i'll pick out a couple one of my favorite is um invoice reprint so oh okay not just and it sounds really weird but it's not just being able to reprint the invoice, but being able to search through by a part number, a date range, a purchase order number to find that information you think for when your accountant has asked for some details that you don't have, or potentially your, you know, it might be a business partner's doing the books or they're doing some of the accounting stuff and they want to follow up. Where was that part used? Where was the credit for that? If you type in that part number, it's going to bring up all the credits and all the invoices that have been raised. Wow. And you can chase that up. You can follow that up. That's all. pretty cool. And another is saved parts. So on the other end, if you've got a shopping basket that you normally purchase from, so um, you've got a particular brand of degreaser and cleaners or there's hose clamps and you've got a stand. Oh, yeah, like a loyalty. Yeah, and you can set up your own little shop of these are the things that I use in my store and these are the things that I order yep. all the time. Yeah. And it makes sense because it makes finding those parts easier. But the other really big trick is logging in and checking it every week because it brings up and it shows you when they're on special and that's the perfect time to stock up oh bargain so just tick on you'll see the price in red and then hit buy 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 on anything you stock up those consumables the things that you're going to always run through and you're not missing out on deals you're not missing out on specials another one's related parts so what we do is we link certain parts together so when you're looking them up that you can see here's the other option so oh yeah so talking like an easy guide yeah and it's more more not so much as a, an upsell opportunity but you think about your um, customer service person they might not be mechanically trained and they're not going to think through all the accessory things that go wrong or or might go wrong and they can go through and see it all in one package so i've looked up um for example uh, a radiator um Whenever you sell a radiator, always sell a radiator cap. Yeah. Because that's the part that the customer recognizes is what the radiator is. And if you've put an old, dirty, rusty radiator cap on, it might be perfectly fine. The, the customer is going to question, what did you do? The extra $15 on a, on a $300 part, chuck it on nice and shiny, and it presents well. You wouldn't put the old clamps on a hose, would you? No, no. And it's that, that sort of thinking and that sort of makes perfect common sense to a mechanic or somebody that's been in the trade for a long time. But if you've got somebody that's less experienced and in more of a customer service role, they might not. And that's why we present those parts underneath just yeah. as little reminders to, hey, don't forget this. And maybe you need these plastic sump plugs on um, Euro vehicles as well. Yeah. Nothing worse than draining the oil and then going, I can't put this back in. I can't drop the car. I can't move it anywhere. It's sitting on the hoist waiting for a $3 part. And the final one is to just click and explore play around you can't break the system it's not a program on, on the computer it's not going to crash click all the buttons there are 
dozens of things that we've built and put into the system based on customer feedback and request. And there are things that have helped one workshop, they might help yours as well. Yeah, right. And there's just so many to to just jump in and play. Don't be scared and have a go. There's there's literally some of the best things that have gone in have been little tiny things that customers have asked for. Automating rego being used as purchase order. Yeah. Just a little tick flag in the settings and you can do that. Customer request, we put it in there. There's dozens of them. The personalization sounds like it's really what you're going to chase down when you get into that mode because you'll be a bit more relaxed, start clicking away and go, oh, I didn't realize I did that. Changing logos, everything. I can't overstate how many how many things that we've got in there that are just really bespoke ways of making the system tailored to what you want yeah. and what you want to do. So what piece of advice would you give uh, successful auto repair businesses who are keen to upscale? Take time to manage time. Walk through your shop, walk through the processes that you follow and look for, you know, even if you take a stopwatch with you and just each step of the way, Think about how much time am I doing this? How much time uh, my technicians or am I wasting by walking from the walking from the service bay to the computer that's in the office? You know, how much time have I lost during a day doing yeah. that? Bring a computer out and put it in there. Even a cheap little or a tablet, cheap, it doesn't matter. Wireless. Yeah. And and have it there. How much time are you going to save and how much disruption happens as well? And that's that's why it's really keen. Everybody thinks, oh, but that only takes me two seconds. It doesn't include the bumping into somebody else, sharing a joke, and and sometimes those things that get you off track and and not not in the headspace. You can disengage. I've got to go look up parts. That takes me time. I turn around and come back. What was I last on? I check through my list. It's all little micro bits of time, but taking the time to go through and understand what those are. Some workshops that we've gone and seen, it, it's just the littlest thing makes a huge change. Yeah. Putting that computer in a place that's central or local to the people that are going to use it most. Um, moving different bits of equipment around the workshop so that they're available and you're not having to... It looks nice and tidy when it's tucked out the back, yeah. but if it's being used on every second job, it's it's not worth keeping there. Put it somewhere else so it's it's easier and faster to get to. Yeah, that's good advice. Another one, let your trainees and your... Your new team members use the catalogs. It's, they're digital natives. They're playing on their phones. They're used to this stuff all the time. Quite often they're younger as well. And and just let them dive in because they'll pick up things that you might not and you might not yeah. see. And it's opportunity. The other one, we spend a lot of effort and a lot of time. We do um, stuff with TAFEs around the country to try and educate and show them these are the systems, these are the processes that are there. And you never know, giving them the opportunity, they might turn around and say, hey, yeah, I know exactly what to do here. Mm. And they might even be able to share and show you something that, that helps your workshop. That's the bit that really you need to let them play because they'll find something and say, hey, have a look at this. Wow, I didn't know that was there. Yep. And suddenly it becomes part of the business. Yep. And ask, ask questions. If they're asking for why and how and what, let them have a look. They, the, the system's built for everybody to jump in. We use the same system for our team when they join on and they're, they're learning parts. All the information's there. So where can our viewers go to see more about Repco's Navigator Pro and the other workshop digital solutions? Well, the, uh, we have a whole bunch of information on repcotrade.com.au. So it's a great resource to go through, see the new updates and some of those new things that we put in, we'll release and show off there. But absolute best of all to find out about any of the systems and programs that we have, have available to workshops is talk to your account manager, yeah. um, your store. They've all got logins and they can use and they can show. And there'll be little tips and tricks that they've picked up from other workshops. So somebody's showing them, hey, this is really cool and we use this all the time. They can share that with you as well. So it's not just their learning and their knowledge and experience, but it's also other workshops that are using the same platform. Well, as our industry changes and our wants and needs change, you know, this has been a very interesting discussion as we move forward and workshops and no doubt it will take a lot away from it. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you, Jason. For everyone watching, we have hope you've got a lot of value from this episode of Evolve TV. If you have any comments or questions about what we've discussed here today, go ahead and visit the Evolve Hub community to continue the conversation. And we look forward to seeing you for the next episode of Evolve TV. Yeah.